everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video, we're going to be doing a deep dive into a topic that causes a lot of discussion among the Wheel of Time community. With the upcoming Wheel of Time TV series coming closer and closer to production, one of the main questions about adaptation is how they're going to handle the violence, sex, nudity, and language in the series. There are very strong feelings on both sides of this argument, and although I've talked about this in previous videos briefly, I believe it's worth taking a further look and using examples from the books to come up with an idea of what rating the Wheel of Time TV show should have if it's based on the books and then ultimately what I believe they're actually going to do with the adaptation. Before we get too much further into the video, I do want to let you guys know about a cool program that is available to my viewers. Audible.com is one of my main supporters on the channel and they are offering a free audiobook to all of my viewers. All you have to do is go to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nabless and sign up for a one month free trial. You'll receive a free audiobook of your choice from their collection of thousands and thousands of books and you'll have an entire month to decide if you want to keep the service. I highly recommend audible.com as I use them not only for listening to the Wheel of Time books, but also other fantasy authors and a lot of leadership and self-development books, which is another passion of mine. The best part is, is that by simply signing up for the trial, you are really helping out the channel and helping me get out more content. If you already have an Audible subscription and you really want to support the channel, please take a moment and check out my Patreon account after the video is over. You can see some of my Patreon exclusive content and you can help support what I'm doing here for as little or as much as you choose. Thank you so much to all of you who are already supporting the channel over on Patreon. So diving into the video, let's go ahead and throw up a spoiler warning. This video will carry a spoiler rating of red, meaning it will contain major spoilers all the way up through the last book. Although I'm not going to be doing any deep dives into major plot points, I will be referencing events that occur later in the books. So if you want no spoilers at all, turn the video off now and watch it once you finish the series. So to break down what rating the TV series might get, we are first going to take a look at what the major factors are that determine what television ratings are. These are the criteria that are used to determine what television rating a show will get. Now the show is going to be distributed worldwide and so it's not just going to use the US TV rating system but for this video we are going to be using the US TV rating system. We'll be using these criteria as guidelines to see where the Wheel of Time book series falls on each of the categories and then at the end of the video I'll give you my opinion based on what I've discovered researching this as to what direction I believe the showrunners will take. So the criteria primarily primarily used in rating television content here in the US are the following factors. Violence, disturbing or adult themes, sexual situations, nudity, language, and drug and alcohol abuse. So let's start by taking a look at the violence in the Wheel of Time books. Wheel of Time as a book series is actually one of the more violent fantasy novels with some quite vivid descriptions of horrible violence and some allusions to even more horrible acts. In the Wheel of Time there is plenty of typical fantasy sword fighting and warfare and obviously through this fighting and warfare we're going to see some violent themes. However, the most obvious example of where the Wheel of Time can get extremely violent is when it comes to the channelers of the One Power and when they begin to participate in warfare. Up until around book 5 and 6, we rarely see the One Power used as a weapon. Dumais Wells changed all of that. This is the first time we get to see how absolutely horrific it would be to fight against the One Power and its ability to explode bodies and tear people limb from limb from a distance. The Battle of Dumai's Wells changed the series and changed warfare within the books. During the battle, the Shido Aiel were literally blown to pieces by the Ashaman. And this is not done on a small scale. Tens of thousands of Shido are blown apart with body parts strewn across the ground. It's so bad that Perrin, who is normally very stoic, can't stop vomiting. And from not only the smell, but also what he's seeing. From this point on, this is war as we see it in the Wheel of Time. And this is just the violence that is described. There are other violent acts that are alluded to throughout the books that we don't always see. If we're basing the ratings on a faithful adaptation of the events we witness in the book, the violence alone would garner a TVMA rating in America. Think the Battle of Bastards in the Game of Thrones, except with bodies exploding mid-fight and body parts flying around the field of battle. So what about adult themes and disturbing themes? Well, there are quite a few that come to mind that wouldn't exactly be child-friendly. In The Dragon Reborn, after the Trolloc attack on the Stone of Tear, 
Rand attempts to bring a young girl back to life who had been killed in the attack. Although she's dead, he essentially attempts to reanimate her corpse with the one power, and in the process, bodily fluids ooze out of her, and she convulses unnaturally. This scene was very disturbing to read, let alone what it would look like when displayed visually. There are also quite a few scenes of torture within the books as well, from white cloak questioners to almost any time Pot on Fane interacts with anyone. Fane actually tortures a Murdral with vivid descriptions. Simarog tortures an Aes Sedai in her warder with the one power, and while there's no blood and gore shown, the reactions to the pain are extreme. Trollocs catch and cook prisoners alive, and this is seen a number of times in the books, as well as then those Trollocs eating the human beings that have been cooked alive. It's pretty disgusting. These are essentially half-man, half-beast creatures cooking people alive in a metal cook pot. That's not a scene that you would want to watch with your children. So if adapted from the books authentically, the disturbing images and themes in the book would also garner a TVMA rating. So what about the sexual themes and sex acts? I think there is a very popular thought among the Wheel of Time community that they do not want to see the Wheel of Time turned into Game of Thrones with gratuitous sex all over the place. So before we get to an opinion on that topic, what do we see in the books? Well, sex certainly happens often in the books, and it's discussed, but in prudish terms. The only real consensual sex scene that we have in the books is between Rand and Avienda when they have some hot, passionate igloo sex in the fires of heaven. The other times we know sex to have occurred, it is simply alluded to or implied. This does not, however, mean that there are not other sexual themes. There are a number of rapes that we see throughout the series as well. It is strongly implied that both Masana and Mogidian were raped by Shaidar Haran for their failures. Matt's relationship with Tylan, regardless of his reactions to it from his point of view, we're, we're essentially seeing non-consensual sex. It's with the threat of violence. It's rape. It may sound controversial to say it, but Matt was being raped repeatedly by Tylan. David Hanlon threatens and almost rapes Elaine multiple times. Emin Valda threatens to rape Morghais. Like, these are not light sexual themes, guys. There are also implied same-sex sexual relationships throughout the stories as well, primarily through Aes Sedai. Elida is seemingly in a sexual relationship when she's the Omerlin with Mediani. From Galena's point of view in chapters, imply that she's a lesbian. So based on what we see in the books, we don't actually have anything extremely explicit from a sexual point of view other than the, the steamy hot igloo sex. But there are a lot of implied heavy sexual themes, such as rape. Now, nudity is a far, far different story. There is an enormous amount of nudity within the series. In fact, some cultures within the show are defined by their nudity and traditions that involve it. For example, both the Shinaran and Aiel peoples are often very open about nudity, even among the opposite sex. In Aiel culture, Gai Shine are stripped naked for a period of time before they can be put into their white garments. The Aiel bathe in sweat tents together. The Shinarans take baths together, both male and female alike. The sea folk are completely topless while at sea. The Aes Sedai are raised to be accepted in full Aes Sedai while completely naked. The Amarlin seat is raised by the sitters in the hall of the tower while they all bare their chest to show they're female. Nudity is so prevalent within the story, it's hard to go far in it without seeing characters nude, both main characters and background characters. While in some areas of the world, nudity doesn't carry the same stigma that it does in the United States, the extreme amount of nudity in the books would easily warrant a TVMA rating. So what about the language? Well, there are zero traditional swear words in the entirety of the series. Zero. Robert Jordan created his own system of swearing that is used throughout the novels. Based on this, you could actually get a children's television rating for language. But what about the drug and alcohol content? While there is certainly alcohol in the story, and the number of characters become visibly drunk during the story, Tom Marilyn, for instance, has a period of time where he is essentially an alcoholic, drinking his pain away. Although we do see drinking, it is not really the focus of the story, and it's not really a big part. There are instances where characters are drugged or poisoned, especially with fork root, but there's nothing explicit there either. I would say the drug and alcohol content is minimal and not worthy of anything beyond the TV-14 rating. So based on the criteria that are used to rate television shows, in the United States. Just based on the violence, disturbing themes, and nudity alone, the show would easily earn a TVMA rating if adapted as written. The real question here is how will the show be adapted? Well, I think the showrunners have a major decision to make. 
but it is not for the reasons you might think. One of the issues I see them having is consistency. Wheel of Time is strange in that there are some extremely mature themes and visuals, but at the same time, there are extremely prudish moments and themes within the series as well. That inconsistency is what leads to this debate in the first place. Game of Thrones, for instance, doesn't have this issue. The books are written in a very mature way with sexual content and violence being explicit from the very beginning. So that makes adaptation of the same scenes and themes easy for the showmakers for Game of Thrones. With Wheel of Time, they are going to need to make a decision on what direction they want to take the show. Will they draw down the nudity and violence and make the show more family friendly? Or will they draw up the language and sexual content to make it similar to Game of Thrones? Can they leave it exactly how it is and have the show feel consistent in theme? You might ask, what do I mean about consistency of the theme? Well, this is important because if the show starts off very tame and family friendly, but then it escalates to graphic violence and sexual content, you've actually made families more angry as their kids were watching a show that was seemingly appropriate and then suddenly it wasn't. It's better to keep the same theme of the show consistent as not to alienate your current audience. So what will they do? I think the question that really needs answered first is who is the desired audience? I believe some clue to this will be in the way that Amazon monetizes its television programming. They make money by new Amazon Prime subscriptions. So the goal here is to bring in as many new viewers as possible. And that will take some word of mouth from existing viewers, also fueled by the excitement of existing Wheel of Time fans. Game of Thrones was not instantly popular, but it grew very popular very quickly as people talked about the series at work and among their friends. So what's going to happen? I think there is a middle ground here. I think no matter what, the show will have a TVMA rating and will carry adult themes. I think if they remove the violence and the disturbing images, let alone some of the nudity, I think they're really taking away from the story and the overall feel of what makes The Wheel of Time great. I think they will need to add a few sex scenes here and there to keep it consistent. Cue the sex igloo. And there will likely need to be a small amount of nudity in the first and second episode just to make the series consistent. The other thing I believe that's going to change will be the language. As much as I love Robert Jordan's swear words, they won't come across well or come across as consistent with the other themes of the show on screen. I think there will need to be some traditional swear words mixed in throughout the show to give some context to people who haven't read the books. So all in all, I think we're going to see a very violent show with some very adult themes and a lot of non-sexual nudity, but not much explicit sex and only a very little bit of explicit language. I think I would be very happy if that's the product that we got. But what do you all think? Do you think they should make the show more family friendly than the books actually are? Or should they ramp it up and make it like Game of Thrones with sexual content and crazy violence and, and all of it? Or should they follow my idea of a middle ground? I'm curious how that choice that they make will affect your desire to watch the show as well. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you are liking my content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I post new content. You can click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified instantly when I post new content. Also, as I said earlier, if you want to support the channel and what I'm doing here, please consider checking out my Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thank you guys all so much for your support. But hey all, until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?